In this episode, Ryan and I explain the phenomenon of audience capture in the world of financial marketing and the results of using that approach. We had fun and hope you enjoy listening. Welcome to the Banker Life Podcast. I'm your host, James Nethery. I'm your co-host, Ryan Griggs. So thanks for tuning in, listening, watching, all the above. And uh, go ahead and, you know, listen in 1.5 speed if you need to. You know, I... <laughs> I know I talk slow, and I appreciate you taking the effort. So, Mr. Griggs and I just sat down, and you know, per use, we're <clears throat> excuse me, we're catching up and just talking. And um, I don't have a topic, you don't have a topic, but we get into the activities or some of the activities of the week, and then we wound up talking twenty minutes, and um, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, let's turn the camera on. Yeah. So I think this is also the first episode where I don't have much hair. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I think they'll notice. You didn't have to mention I, it. <laughs> well, I got to put it out there. People are going to get clever in the comments. And so, I, yes, the hair's. I got tired of seeing through it, you know. Yeah. This is hilarious. I don't know if she watches, <laughs> but I got to tell the story. So we had the Banking with Life event late last year. Yes. Right? Live event, Fort Worth. Uh, so one of your clients of like 12 years came up. I won't say her name. She's sweet. She's very sweet. We got along well. But I'm walking up. All first, my clients are sweet. They're first cool. day of the event, right? Yeah. And uh, I don't know who this woman was and had never met her. First thing, first thing she says walking up to me, she goes, oh, my God, Ryan, you don't have as much hair in person. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're right. I don't. Yeah. Oh, look there, the camera edge hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know? She later came back and apologized. I don't know why I said that. I'm like, it's okay. I know it's a fact. I mean, it's a, yeah. Frankly, I'm still adjusting to it, you know. So. I know, you were in it, yeah. <laughs> the joke is it's growing on you, but not me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, I like it. Well, at least it's trying to grow on me. It's not even trying. <laughs> <laughs> I got tired of seeing through my, seeing through the hair, so I figured it's time. Let's go oh, for it. Go. Embrace it, right? Yeah. All it's right, like, so. It's like you get tired of playing in the market. <clears throat> I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go pay a big old life insurance premium. No, it's going to go All up. The it way always in. goes up. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> you, the younger you are, the more aggressive you should be. You have time to recover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course you win. Look at the internal rate of return or the rate of return. What's the rate of return? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, the market's great for the uh, market manipulators. All right. And tell me which market on the face of the earth is not manipulated, please. Mm-hmm. You know, then it, it, I mean, this is not what we were talking about before we turned the camera on. But uh, how about that cryptocurrency, right? It's it's exploding. You know, the SEC is just about to improve some, you know, mutual fund or whatever. Mm-hmm. Let the, uh, they've made progress anyway. Allowing Bitcoin to be in there. It's like, you know, and everybody knows it's real money. You can control it. The government can't track it. And it's like, oh my gosh, who believes that? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. I have a friend who uh, has a successful like claims processing, property and casualty claims processing business and mm-hmm. nearby where I live. And uh, does he contract out to? PNC businesses or PNC insurance companies. He has adjusters and yeah, claims cool. people all over the country. Perfect. Yeah. And he, we were getting into conversation because he's had offers to buy out his business. And uh, he was asking me, he's like, you know, Ryan, at, at my age, what, you know, what do you think would be a good number? Like just to have coming in regularly, month to month, year to year, whatever. Like if I could sell the business, use the money I get, put it somewhere and just live off interest or proceeds or whatever, you know, what would be a good number? And, I said, you know, I don't know if I'd want to get hooked on a number. Yeah. You know, talking about how things are going generally, politically, economically. It's like if things get worse, whatever the number is, it's going to need to be bigger than what you thought it was going to be. You know, and if things just continue as they are, the number yeah. needs to be bigger. Right. Yeah. So I, I told him, like, you know, my, because I mentioned IBC and it didn't have a lot of background in finance, which is understandable. And, so, you know, I, my goal would be to establish a system of sort of ongoing, improving capital growth, you know, wherever that's going to be, you know, but it's kind of like moving from a, th- a thinking in terms of a set number out there in the future to establishing a system. And for some reason, the reason I brought this up is 
that was like a that was just such an unusual idea to him. To him? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's out there hustling, you know. But as far as like long term financial, yeah. real financial strategizing and planning, just hadn't the occasion hadn't been around. Of course, he's busy. You know, the people who are super productive have a lot to do something with. Don't have a lot of time to figure out what to do with it. You know, uh, I think that's pretty common. I don't, yeah. uh, you know, and almost maybe more so in the upper, you know, the higher income levels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, if you're super busy in business, you know, there's you're almost accumulating things and you if you do it traditionally, you know, here's 401k, the IRA, yeah. the Roth, <clears throat> you know, if you're not indexed out of all that um, cash balance plans, whatever it may be. In my 33 year experience with life insurance and financial services, I see people retiring or trying to retire on too little. Mm hmm. And typically always, you know, toward as they get closer to retirement, they have a hodgepodge of all kinds of things. And it's all their money. It's all their capital. It's all their assets. You know, they own or control them. But typically they're not congruent. You know, I bought some life no insurance. Integration, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, it's like I'm just busy working, busy trying to have a fabulous life and enjoy my family or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you're just buying things, you know, coins, art, precious metals, you know, life insurance policy from a brother-in-law, from a coworker. Yep. You know, uh, you know, if if it was successful, you know, the the nephew or the niece, you know, encouraged them to do a self-directed IRA and put it into real estate and flip, fix and flip, or buy and hold and. You know, uh, like I said, if that was successful or whatever, you know, they wind up with all of this stuff and have talked to all of these people over the years, typically not very long after a sale or a purchase is made, you know, when the sale's made, the guy's gone, Mm -hmm. you know, and so they haven't had in-depth conversations unless they're buying a new thing, you know, and that new person is like telling them all the, so at the end of the day, they wind up and there's no systematic plan for distribution or cash flow income but that's my experience and i'm sure uh, of course i sure i don't want to talk to everyone but i can't talk to everyone my point is i probably don't talk to a lot of people that feel that they're very successful in going down the right path yeah right this is no direction it's kind of like no. you don't know what you don't know you said the sales made the guy's gone uh, i had a conversation uh, or was girl it, was it this week last week yeah or girl and in fact let me mention that first you know because <laughs> we've been to it was last week on or last week last year i don't know if you remember it but small little life insurance local life insurance like gathering a company was in town and had us for dinner or whatever and um there was a slide in the little hr legal approved presentation about the composition of the independent advisor industry right like who the people are the sort of the demographics uh, yeah and what was being celebrated was how it's becoming more diverse of course right? never diverse intellectually of course but always diverse in terms of sex wait would you race. say that again because that's where the truth is never diverse never diverse intellectually yeah, yeah no it's about you know the, the women or it's uh you know a certain ethnic backgrounds you know, and that that's like that's supposed to be that's the growth opportunity in the market i think that's uh so insulting <laughs> to people to all people of course. to say that you no know, oh we need you need someone who looks like you or talks like you so that you can understand that I'm in trouble, <laughs> you know, you idiot, you know, it, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> sure. But and it, and it there's there's like some gaslighting in there. It's like some paternalism in there, you know, a little head pat, like oh, we'll get someone who's like you, so that you can understand them. Like oh my gosh, <laughs> how about use your words and explain like with logic, and then maybe that'll be enough <laughs> I, I i think it's so in this dei push uh, you know the diversity equity inclusion nonsense is you know like the rest of american finance has a presence in life insurance too and it, i think this idea that you got to have because it's in contrast to the alternative which is the family like you mentioned the family member or the whatever the fraternity brother from college you know 20 years ago or whatever is going to beat you up to 
buy some insurance. And in fact, the friend I just mentioned who has this claims PNC processing business has some insurance on members of his family only because he yeah. similarly was beat up by whatever it was, a family friend or something. And, and they had such an un- unpleasant experience. I had a call with a different guy this past week too who described it as an emotional bludgeoning. Oh, to yeah. talk to the conventional life insurance agent is just an emotional bludgeon you know everything is designed it's to, abusive it, it yeah it's to, to like psychoanalyze you into just saying yes i think the uh well there's a lot of things going on because i experienced the same thing almost well just regularly right it's almost like the financial advisor quote unquote how broad that is right but everybody wants to get themselves into that it's, it's almost like going on to social media today and everybody's a digital creator i mean what the, <laughs> what the heck is that you know seriously okay yeah all right so it's almost like uh, as vague as possible is what it <laughs> it's a it's in a it's almost like a gaslighting from the industry upon the advisor or wannabe advisor you know and and they get caught up into this you know closing quote unquote sales you know you got to close and all the look, terminology. Go, I've well, been in the, sales a long time, and I have been accused of being the worst salesman in the world. Thank you very much. Uh, I love that. Okay. Um, and, 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 so, and then they get caught up in the marketing, and, you know, if I just say the right words. Mm-hmm. You know, you mentioned that a minute ago, right? But it's like, you know, yeah, you mentioned the right words to cause someone to think instead of, like, not think and buy or some, you know. Oh, you're going to have a birthday. We better sign that life insurance policy before you have a birthday. Yeah. That life insurance application. You know, oh, the taxes are going to come down, you know, in 2025. Well, hell, everybody knew that from 2016, <laughs> right? Are you going to like pour it on now, financial industry on the unsuspecting American public? I'm just saying there's an awful lot of gaslighting. And then <clears throat> because they're so gaslit, you know, I'm not doing the right marketing. What do you got to do in the right marketing? You know, what do I got to say? James, show me what I need to say. And, mm. and and that's uh, one step above James. You do everything that you know. I don't know how to do, so I can get paid. I'm don't get me going here. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I need to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. Then they get gaslit by all. Oh, you need this particular software. Mm. You need this. You know, you've got to say these things. You got to have. And I'm not trying to beat up click funnels. It's just easy to. You know, mention that, you know, the low level tripwire. I'm going to make a free download offering of a of a sales pamphlet and call it education. Or, you know, how about the first chapter of my book that I plagiarize from everybody else, you know, and without, mm. you know, plagiarization doesn't <laughs> give credit. Right. OK. I mean, that's it's a result of. I think it's, it's ignorance, but it, it's encouraged by the gaslighting of the marketing industry and the. You know, Wall Street and the financial services firms. And then when it doesn't produce the results on their timeline, the advisor, the expert, the self appointed expert, the salesperson, it becomes abusive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like your client, your, your, the conversation that you had, you know, and I hear it all the time. These people won't leave me alone. I mean, <laughs> um, and you know I'm a. You do what you got to do. I need to block them. You do what you got to do. Let me. Let me. And I want to. All of that is true, in my experience. And I just want to say that if you want to practice the infinite banking concept correctly, in my opinion, from my understanding, it'll be based on you individually, your family, your individual goals, wants, needs. You know, and all that's marketing, right? But you do have goals in my opinion, and things that you're going to do anyway. You know, this can be properly integrated. This concept can be properly integrated into whatever it is you're doing, right? And and if you engage with us, <clears throat> we're going to lay out a plan after we've learned enough about what you're trying to do and what you want to do, and then we'll educate you on that, and then you decide whether you want to do that or not. <clears throat> and I assure you, you will not be uh, – tracked down abused mm-hmm. gaslit <laughs> it's it's and to me and look i talk in front of agents all the time you know i believe if you can convey the power of the infinite banking concept and you have a firm understanding of dividend paying whole life insurance because that's what we're using when we 
uh, talk about the infinite banking concept, and you can convey the the power of Nelson's work. I don't need to enter into an abusive relationship with a prospective mm. client. Like, you know, I'm going to die if I don't get that case delivered or paid on that case. It's like, you do what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, it's so simple to me. If you convey, and I'm not saying I'm an expert. I don't have the ability to convey uh, to the point when I, where I think I should be able to convey, you know? So I'm just saying, if you can convey the, power of the infinite banking concept and you know or understand and you know and understand and can convey the power of dividend paying whole life insurance without getting lost in the weeds and i don't care about all these marketers on imo that say become your own bank and and do this and do that and and then talk broadly uh, about properly structured i get it and those who don't buy into the imo those in the financial services industry who don't buy into the imo don't understand how to properly build a policy yeah, since this will go publicly, I'm going to be a gentleman. <laughs> and it's like, go educate yourself. Right, so I use the E word. Yeah. So go a, educate yourself. A couple of things. Come on, y'all. That was good. No, that's good. But and I'm going to add some to it that I think you might like. So I don't. I don't know where I came across this term, but I'd heard it before, and when I it was on a podcast or something, not anything financial related. It was journalism related. Ah, I got it from Glenn Greenwald. It's all coming back. I was watching Glenn Greenwald's program, System Update on Rumble, and he was talking about mainstream media, and he used the term audience capture. And I was like, OMG. So I look up for a definition, right? This is... uh, from a Wikipedia type site. Oh, I'm out. Um, oh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia type. Sorry. Yeah. This is a good definition. I like this definition, okay. though. Audience capture is a self reinforcing feedback loop that involves telling one's audience what they want to hear and getting rewarded for it. Mm. And I think that a lot of the financial marketing type people on social media are captured by their audience. Yes. Absolutely. I think a lot of yeah the this the whole short term thinking type paradigm, you know maximum cash value relative to premium as soon as possible right now. Let me find an advisor who's just going to say yes and give me that. Maybe we'll look at you know we'll run some mills or do some quotes across a couple of different companies <laughs> and find the one that spits out the best number, uh, and that's what I want. So find an agent to validate that give, give that, that and then say yes and then the agent gets paid so he gets rewarded for it yes All right so captured by the audience and rewarded for it yes um it's kind of like it kind of goes hand in hand with this idea of commodification yes where we have either a set premium structure or just a set cookie cutter copy paste drag and drop way of repeating things they all look the same yeah don't <laughs> let the details confuse you like let's yeah. just do the same thing with different people uh it's a commodity it's standardized and well of course we might want to do that because you know you don't have a service relationship for your grocery purchase right if you don't go one. purchase commodities you're getting the thing it's a head of lettuce it's lettuce you yeah. know what do you need a service person for uh, it's life insurance, but it's a policy. What do I need a service person for? It's just, I'm just buying this thing and it's done. You know, I've got some money. I've heard two different times this week. I've got X number of money. I'm ready to put that into a policy. Yeah. It's like, well, that kind of implies a cartoon caricature of what a life insurance policy is. Well, and, they don't know what they don't know. Which is fine. And, which is <laughs> um, okay, and I get that. But what I'm saying is like, yeah. that is the result of an online education quote unquote education, an online marketing <clears throat> environment of commodification mm -hmm. where many of the uh, talking heads on online media are captured by an audience that doesn't know how to articulate what it is they want and why, right? And so let's get them together and see what comes out of it. And we were talking ahead very, of time. Very good. I mean, yeah. yeah. We were talking ahead of time of the kind of outcome that that produces and it service constantly we constantly come back to service right because service what do i need service for you know like you're gonna charge me for that is there gonna be a bill like, ooh, what? and what you know it's life and how hard could it be what would i need for well just this past week setting up 
automatic loan repayments for the same guy across two policies with different amounts paid to each contract. Was he in the country? Uh, How about if the client's out of the country what going if, to three or four different countries and then you got an entity involved? And I'm just, so, I mean, I'm just telling you. I'm so glad you brought This client actually now lives in Texas, but has previously resided abroad. Well, I, and I yeah. bring that up because, you know, there's sometimes people travel, sometimes people have... Uh, engagement entities around the world or whatever it may be um and they could and, and not even around the world they could be in u.s territories right so let's say you have a client that, that the online system whatever they're doing is exceeding the capabilities of the online system and there is you're not going to get a million dollar loan over a computer I mean, you're just not okay so it, it, it involves the uh either the agent's office or direct home office or maybe both right yeah. depending on the company's situation but how about they're traveling, you know, in, 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 in a U.S. territory or between U.S. territories and they have multiple entities, but they happen to be in Europe and something's not going through. You tell me you're going to call your agent and he's going to answer the phone on a Saturday or Sunday. I'm not going to answer my phone on a Saturday or Sunday. Let me be clear. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just saying uh, <clears throat> there's a reason there's two ladies right up front that are dedicated service. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's an extreme example. I get it. But uh, when it, when you need it, it matters when you don't need it, eh, you know, maybe not so much. Yeah. So, and then the commod with the commodification comes the obliteration of any kind of nuance, none or detail. Right. Uh, <laughs> never mind an understanding of what's going to happen later or why or like why would we use certain elements no there's the why in general is gone right the why is the victim of commodification and so you're not going to get any kind of coherent strategy out of this turn and burn type type business uh, but it's so pervasive and then you know, we go online and we use the same words. I mean, we're speaking the same English language usually. And then there's, uh, you know, same particular terms, banking, insurance. Okay, well, that's all the same. I just want that IBC thing. You know, let me do that. Um, yeah, I was mentioning to you ahead of time. We had, had another call, another introductory call. Software engineer, bless his heart. Uh, you know, how long is this going to take? <laughs> yeah. well underwriting you know four to six weeks look there are companies that don't do much underwriting that'll do a lot faster right, i'll run you through a little clever algorithm you know. i love i love the method and i don't want to throw you off but you know a particular company people agents whomever i mean there are people involved or it wouldn't exist right Yep, I yeah. love. I know exactly where you're going yep uh, two different things <laughs> I, okay i like the one that uh number one is just tell me how much you want to pay. Email the premium that you want to pay and your age and whatever else, low-level stuff, and we'll send you an illustration. So they're all the same for maybe one or two companies or whatever. And then the other <clears throat> is let me drag you through the underwriting process because it's laborious after COVID. I don't care who you are. There are, you know, depending on the total death benefit or the underwritten amount, Lower underwritten amounts. They can go accelerated underwriting, you know, whatever the companies want to call that. Uh, and it can go through, especially if you're young and uber healthy and there are no medical records, right? It can go pretty quickly. But let's say you're older and you have some experience and, you know, you've been around um, and you have medical records and and rightly so. You, I can go on, but it would it could take longer to Takes go time through underwriting. To evaluate that. Yeah. Yeah. And why would you want why would you want to put your capital into a company, a mutual company? Therefore, you become part owner. Right. And they're going to let just let every unhealthy, moderately healthy individual have a policy, too, which means a death claim is going to happen sooner than it really should. If proper underwriting was occurring. OK. And I'm not a shill for the life insurance companies. I love my wife. I'm not married to the life insurance companies. OK. <laughs> the other process. Excuse me. Let's just get the application done and we'll see what you qualify for and then we'll build a solution or a policy or whatever. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. You know, sign, 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 sign. Yep. And then we'll get to the details or whatever later. Yeah. How about that? We're going to apply oh my for a policy, but we don't know what it is we're applying for. 
Yeah. And we'll do that with two or three companies. We'll submit an app, an application with two or three companies. And the first one to approve is what you'll get. We'll build mm. it. Yeah, it happens all the time. Sometimes the client knows and understands that, and sometimes they don't. Rarely does the client, in my opinion, understand the uh, the negatives that are associated with that type of business. Mm-hmm. And I understand, too, that people want to optimize. They want to be efficient, don't want to waste time. I get it. Uh, but there's also the problem of cutting corners. Like, you want to cut corners, then, yeah, you'll get some anti-selection. <clears throat> that always you'll produces the highest quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean and i kind of went i went through this with the first advisor was an advisor this is just a salesperson that i talked to when i fr- after i first met nelson got my first policy little baby policy full-time student part-time waiter hardly any money but enough to pay a premium i don't have enough money to do that if I did when I was, well, we can talk about the why, right? Where there's a will, there's a way, <laughs> yeah. and if there's a will, there's generally a why behind that. Yeah, and it's it's so sad because this commodity type approach sets the field for all of these misconceptions, you know, and that's one of them. I don't have enough money to do this. I can't pay enough premium. Uh, it is not serving anybody to indulge the lack of understanding. I mean, let, we should. May I have a little honesty about it and be like, look, whole life is brand new to most people. We've had uh, maybe misconceptions based on others' experience about it in the past. This is something that needs to be learned. You know, spend sure. some time and go through it. It's a, it's not something that you can just stuff into an, a, a neat little package. You know, to standardize and throw on the assembly line and well, you know Henry Ford life insurance. It's like, come on, yo, this is well. That's the- an insult to Henry Ford. I mean, Henry Ford. Yeah, I mean, he. I'm just saying that he he brought an awful lot of efficiency to the manufacturing. Sure. So, but you, what color you want? As long as it's black. You know, <laughs> well, it's initially, like, yeah, two yeah. models. I get it. The standardized everything approach, you know. So this is 1930s <laughs> style Model T life insurance. It's like, how about a little nuance? I think it's worse than that. You know, and speaking of nuance, you mentioned it earlier. You know, when I speak with people and I speak with them daily, um, and, and and I get a lot of James wherever they're at. I try to I try to understand where they're at and what my encouragement would be to go for how they would go forward and whatever it is they're trying to do or learn, right? And quite often, you know, I send out a link to this YouTube channel, right? <clears throat> With the and it's and it's almost like I feel bad, like you're self promoting or something. No, which I don't like self promote. But I mean, I tell them, listen, this is long form. It's nuanced, and the nuance doesn't exist in this commodif- commodified marketing yeah. at all. And and it may be extremely important, but you have to take the time to learn that. Yeah. And, but look, it goes together, right? Because in a uber streamlined, standardized, high volume type approach, nuance is costly because it yep. slows everything down. Yeah. You know, I tell people when we start getting into company selection, you know, why are some companies interested in IBC, others not so much? You know, we sort of talk about big four and the small to medium sized companies. And I tell people, look, this IBC style whole life type business is low return and high maintenance. You know, the big old companies, they don't want nothing to do with it. They're selling all the stuff that looks really great on a quarterly return or a quarterly statement. You know, uh, this stuff doesn't work out for the company for years. Yeah. yeah and even well, then the re- the return is small, you know. Well, that's why stock companies, I mean, that's why companies demutualize and, and and they don't want to earn the lower rate of return on their products and every business is in business to make a profit. Yes. Um generally they have to pr- provide a service or a product. There's no question. So my point is that uh most of these stock companies if they did and they can uh you know create some kind of a participating policy it's possible. it's possible do they no they don't why don't they the hedge funds the private equity groups they want to take life insurance and that's what they're doing they're they're gobbling up 
every life insurance company, especially mutual companies, that they possibly can. Why? The mutual company has a capital, they the and money. if they get access to it, they can leverage it nine times greater than a mutual company. And then, oh my gosh! And then they look; they're not okay with six to eight percent returns, which is what a mutual company operates from with whole life policies. Uh, they want twelve to fourteen percent returns. So it, does it, it does it really take a rocket science scientist to think through that? <laughs> it doesn't, you know. And I think these uh, the fastest. It's it's really not the fastest. It's a shortcut to get paid by these marketers, in my opinion, mm. to do the homogenized. Everything looks the same. The commoditized product. Homogenized. That's exactly the right word. <laughs> it is a short. Cut. And let me say that there are no shortcuts. And you know this. There are no shortcuts. And by gosh, if you don't have time to do it right, you sure as hell don't have time to do it over. So take the time Oof. up front to to learn some of these basics, but then the nuance. You know, I love it when my clients can explain to me <clears throat> why something's not right. It's like, oh my gosh, oh. it brings a tear yeah. to my eye. <laughs> And then they still do it like they're very humble. Well, you know, I'm not, I don't have a license and I don't know. They could be stellar and they, most all of them are stellar in their business yeah. or their personal life. Yeah. And then they, well, I'm listening to this and I've got, you know, my experience because I've got policy. I've been doing this and I listen to this and I'm being more aggressive than they. Okay. And I'm just <laughs> excited whenever they can say, well, that's not right because of this. It's like, Oh my gosh, speak up, be bold. Yeah, Don't, keep going. Know, I yeah. love that. Yeah. Or even one step back from that, just the confusion, you know, oh, this guy, premium equaling income, super common, <sighs> right? Let me go get this HELOC on the home to pay the premium <clears throat> that exceeds my income in this year. To you know, That's going to create a policy loan balance because I'm going to go borrow against cash value to pay off the banker. But then wait, then there's this new debt, like... That doesn't make sense. Ryan, can, how does that, like, can you explain that? And I'm no, like, no, let's oh, don't get no. lost in the math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and then Ryan, uh, I don't want to say you discovered this week, but you got maybe beat up a little bit with the I block. Oh yeah. New term for the, uh, <laughs> it's been around know, for over a year. Lee locks, that I know. cash value line of credit. I block new terminology, insurance backed line of credit from a conventional bank. All right, got direct recognition treatment on the life insurance contract. Dividend's going to be reduced if I have a loan balance outstanding at the end of the policy year. Don't want that. Who would? I don't. <laughs> right, so no. <laughs> don't collateralize with the company. Go to a bank. Let me right. let me ask you this. I love this because somebody made that up and it sounds good, right? It sounds good. And I got a couple. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter if I know or don't know who like started marketing that because I, I could care less. But let me ask you this. So if I'm going to go to the third party lender and get a personal line of credit mm. pray tell what collateral is backing up that line of credit everything right? everything <laughs> and and your future production mm. what you do in the future okay now now let's be this is really look I, it's i block i can just add one more word right or one more letter so it's short it's catchy it's like yeah why didn't i think of that right sounds, <laughs> sounds Amer good sounds american <laughs> yeah okay I go to the bank, put the policy up to back the line of credit. As soon as you sign that thing, you tell me, is that policy the only dang thing backing that line of credit? Mm. What? Oh, what a good point. Yeah, mm. No. So if I'm going to put, you're real estate guys, right? Uh, people. Um, I'm just going to put this one piece of property up for collateral on this line of credit, right? Mm. What should I call that? A uh, lilac, a low lock. <laughs> I mean, who who creates these names, right? And then that one piece of property, right? You're John Henry, and I know I I hear it all the time. I have non recourse loans, James. Well, by God, you don't have very many, and there are not very many of you that can say that. All right? Do they exist? Yeah, not for us. That's part of the good old boys club, <laughs> and we're not in the club. I'm just saying, you know, uh, uh, I know they exist. When you sign your John Henry. Everything you own backs up that personal guarantee. So, with your good friend, the banker, who really just wants the best for you. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> now listen, look, I'm gonna. I know some bankers who are nice. My best friend in West Texas was is a former bank, Jacqueline. Former I'm banker. gonna. I'm gonna bring to on. That. I'm gonna bring on a local banker this year as a guest. Cause okay. I, I love him, you know. And there's a whole story. You know, you know the whole story. There are several stories associated. The one you help understand what. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, Cause I, I've uh, I borrowed money at a bank, you know, with a policy, collateralizing, and so we're going to go through all that. And, and but my point here is, like, who creates these terms? It's just like investment grade life insurance. The hell, that comes from the '80s. Mm-hmm. They still use it. Like overfunding, it's like they created that. Overfunding, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, it it is okay to take the time to really discover the infinite banking concept for yourself. All right. Yeah. We just get the the sensationalism. A lot of good terms here. You know, the commodification and the homogenization of these policies and the. Uh, the clickbait, click funnel, turn and burn, high turnover type. It, it, it just it creates such a negative learning environment. You know, it's like the opposite of what you'd want if you were trying to. It's abusive. Get to the deep. I mean, and the core. abuse just gets deeper because if I'm going to go through that, it's all about now the shortcut to the individual getting paid. So if you are not going along their timeline, that relationship becomes abusive. They're expected to get paid. You know, I mean, in in it's all part and parcel, yeah, of the same process. That yeah, and l- and let me say this too: life insurance agents receive commissions. Right, we're paid on commission. The last thing that happens is the agent gets paid. The very last. Oh my God. So we get these fun little interactions. It's been enough time. I'll mention it now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, like, when I worked at uh, one of these big four companies for two weeks, they uh, talking about words and the language, you know, the specific. One of the popular training uh, terms is the, the idea of the quarterback. And you're going to be the quarterback. And there's going to be other individuals, like financial experts. Yeah, there's, there might be lawyers involved. Yeah. There might be CPAs Oh, the life insurance involved. agents is always a quarterback in those groups oh, when their the attorneys are involved, state planning attorneys. Yeah. yeah, the CPAs. Yeah, they all sit around the table and look at the life insurance agent as a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, let's suspend disbelief for a moment and continue. <laughs> okay, so, the, but the, the, that's the idea. You're gonna yeah, be a sure. quarterback. I'm going to help and help you facilitate all these conversations. Sound it might sound nice to some people. I don't know. So I participated in a call. The, this is an, an example of the company gaslighting their financial professional. Sorry. <laughs> well, I had this call a couple of months. Did you go ago. out on the street? Look, I'm going to be the quarterback. I just need to find somebody with the largest state with problems, and I'll point them out. And, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what it is, right? Okay. Well, that turns out this one client, and he had uh, engaged with one of these people who regards himself as sort of this quarterback type person. He's going to work with all the other advisors you know collaboration there's another word that we haven't said collaboration it's that heavy is, if you use ai buzzword oh my god it's collaboration all right Ryan, i can't believe you haven't collaborated before i was told that i was told by another life and oh Ryan, i can't believe you haven't collaborated before and it caught me off guard because i'm naive i'm like what are you talking about i haven't collaborated before have you seen the number of talks i've given like the at no cost that i've done like, three what, what do you mean collaborate oh you, oh by collaboration you mean you get paid by me yeah yeah. That's what collaborate means. Yeah. <laughs> or you do the work and I get paid. We're co- let's collaborate. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Or how about when they when some, you know, uh uncapable, you know, financial professional <clears throat> does some work or a lot of work in their mind, <clears throat> but they can't deliver the solution to the client, but you can. And then they end around, Sounds you know, familiar. <laughs> yeah, at least that one directly contacted you and said, hey, you should at least collaborate. How about if they directly talk to the client and say, tell them they should pay me for the jank work that I did that wouldn't benefit you in the long term? It's like, can y'all believe this? This happens. This exists. Talk about gaslighting. Yeah. Imagine you being the client. And you wanted to get insurance, and you went online, you talked to a few people, and you talked to somebody later, decided to go with the one you talked to later, 
only to then have the people you talk to first tell you that you then need to go tell the other agent that they need to pay, he needs to pay the first guy. I mean, how uncomfortable would that be? It's awkward. It's 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 abusive to the client, in my opinion. Yeah, and look, we're like smiling, having fun <laughs> talking about this. But one, nobody else talks about it. Hello, and then two, I know for sure that people who are interested in IBC who want to do this don't have an idea of what goes on behind the scenes. No, they don't. As far as the agent, and so then without that understanding, even like a surface level type, you know, lighter type thing that we're doing here, they'll get involved. They go through the ringer months, years will go by before something. Happens. I talked to a guy this week. Uh, I've you been know, listening to you three years. Yeah. What brought yeah. you to IBC? Like yeah. what made you want to get in touch? Well, I found out about about two years ago. Yeah. But well, do you have any policies? Oh, no. Okay. They've been looking at this for two years. You don't have any policies yet. Well, why would that be? Well, probably because it's uh, made to appear so difficult. There's like, there's, all this to sift through. It's uncomfortable. You have the emotional bludgeoning. You go through the corporate, sanitized, HR approved, turn and burn, sign fast, get paid quick type processes. And yeah, sometimes going to go by. You know, you're not. And every day that goes by is a day without premium paid, without cash value growing. Heaven birthdays, and it serves mm-hmm. nobody. Nobody. But well, some people look. Look, I'm a, I'm a slow learner, but I'm a, I'm quick you know, to, I don't know what you call it, quick start. I don't, I don't know what you call that. I mean, an early adopter, I don't know all the terminology out there, but I'm a slow learner, but by golly, if it's good and I think it's good, I'm in and, and I'm not all into the point where, uh, you throw all cares to the wind and I'm going to rely on somebody that, uh, is a good marketer, a good salesperson. You know, I mean, I have to be educated, Yeah. but I can adopt an idea relatively quickly. <clears throat> and, and, and the reason I'm saying that is some people take longer to uh, to investigate, to research, to vet. Yeah. Because if you can't spot the noise, in my opinion, if it's difficult for you to spot the noise, if they're all saying the same words and the same language, and there's just a few minor, you know, I'm using IUL or I'm using UL, and this, and, but, you know, be your own bank. And they talk about tax free and all of these uh, words, some benefits, but they don't, and, and you don't have to become a life insurance agent, but what's wrong with IUL, right? You should be able to articulate that and understand that before you purchase. What's wrong with dividend paying whole life insurance? You should be able to articulate that or understand that before you put money in there. I mean, you know, so my point is some. People take longer than others to learn. And I can't blame some of them because they've got like trauma. Yes. You know, if you've been hounded by people, if you've had a negative experience, maybe you've actually bought something and something blew up or it just went bad. Like, yeah, you're going to have it out. I mean, and I I get it. And it's uncom- That's why when people ask what I do, I was joking. I had dinner with a, some friends and um, new people, friends of friends. And one of them asked, you know, what do you do? And I was like, let's just rip this freaking Band-Aid off, man. I'm like, I sell life insurance. Lots of life insurance. <laughs> you get into details, but every time I say that, you, the look comes over the face. It's like, mm. I'm sitting on the other <laughs> side, the <laughs> other end of the Where's table. the exit? Need yeah. another drink, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, and I, Making it a double. <laughs> I, know, I feel bad because, yeah, like if, if I wasn't, you know, if I was seven – years ago let's say and i went out and just having fun with friends and asked somebody i just met what they did and they said they sell life insurance yeah i'm looking for the door too like how do i please don't tell me anything can i just have a nice night you know yeah what triggers what triggers that for you now is there anything like somebody you're being introduced to someone oh yeah um let's see uh Probably P, uh, P and C people do it. Anytime I find out they're, they're, they want to quote the home or the house for sure, but that's okay. That normally goes quick, right? And you get over it. And, and now the P and C, at least in Texas, the P and C insurance market is so bad that <laughs> no one's trying to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's shopping, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? I don't know. I, the, dig, the digital creator thing you said earlier, that's one, right? If you got a podcast, like, oh, you know. Although sometimes when people ask me what I do, I said, 
if I want to like please them, I'll I'll go. I'll lead with podcast. If I want to like scare them off, I'll lead with insurance. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like which one? Ooh, podcast. Oh, tell me more about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> insurance. Oh, yeah. You're just not a very good marketer, right? Because yeah. you could captivate them and then get them in the headlock and sell them something. You know, in a short order. Yeah. You know what does it for me? Hmm. I know you didn't ask, but I just want no, to tell, tell me. You. Multi-level marketing. Oh. Or direct marketing. You know, change the name. It's like, I'm like, oh, you know. Well, any kind, it's really the form of the marketing more so than the particular kind of industry. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah because true. the uh, the spammy emails, especially the ones I didn't ask for, um, that stuff bothers me. The gamification and the sensationalization on, on, the, on YouTube and stuff, you know, where we got the, yeah. it's gamified, you know, I, it, it looks a little uh, adolescent, in my opinion. Uh, that bothers me. Look, I know, like, I, I know there's good. F- One point on collaboration because I mentioned collaboration. And it's like, oh, collab. Also, this week it's been a full week. I got a call from our friend in Georgia, Doug, who that, there was some genuine collaboration going on there. I had a question about the valuation of a particular kind of business for a client, and I had sent him a. And he, I think it was, I just sent him an email and he just calls me and we have a nice chat. And I really like Doug and he's yeah. great. That's, and there was no, here, let me, let me send you this, uh, you know, terms of sale or you know, this financial agreement, you know, sign here and, you know, I'll, you can charge me per 15 minute block. There was none of that, you know, there was no <laughs> bill or anything. Uh, and Doug's so sweet. It's like, that's real collaboration. Here's real collaboration. You know, it, it's like, the, the idea that collaboration, it's a code word. You're uncomfortable telling me I need to pay you. Yeah, it's a code word. And, and, and we've talked about this before. It's like the uh, there are code words that you don't know the meaning of. Right. And, you know, you have a conversation. It's full of code words. And everybody knows them but you. And, you know, they all know what the code words are and what they mean, but you don't. It's like, my gosh, can we speak plain English, please? <laughs> I mean, it would help me out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, and it, it's so unfortunate because if people really like, if they took an honest, open-minded look at what a whole life policy is, you know, and I get it, it sounds complicated right away, but, you know, the idea that cash value is the net present value of the death benefit, that by paying a premium, you can directly engineer an improvement in your net worth, and you can do that for the rest of your life at increasing efficiency over time for as long as you want, like in a private tax-free environment, all of which you can get to tax-free to use if you want, repay if and when you want, like... If, if you allow just to get into what that all is, it's so much more powerful than the, you know, blowing smoke up your skirt to <clears throat> try to, you know, dazzle you and sensationalize things and make it so it's really, just sign here. You know, it's. I think there's so much of that out there. The inexperience, I, I don't know uh, all the characteristics of the people that, that, get involved in that it's just i feel like they just don't know what they don't know <clears throat> and they <clears throat> excuse me they want to learn something they're intrigued by the idea to the extent that they'll endure some things that they don't know yet mm. that they shouldn't endure or have to endure ah uh, put up with they put up with stuff they shouldn't have to right because they just don't know don't they're know. interested in yeah, you know yeah. the end result they are interested in controlling the banking function they want to become their own banker they don't want to be dependent on bankers and um and, and but it, it's to me <clears throat> it's when you get into that or when that gets on you right and so i talk about the noise all the time i'm almost tired i'm sure half of you especially the agents that uh don't like me or the way i do things don't want me to talk about the noise because i'm talking directly about you and what you do um and then the good listeners probably get tired of me talking about the noise and the reason i do is because i'm trying to point out that that's noise and why it's noise right but don't rely on my explanation of why it's noise listen to me please hear me listen to ryan read his work and then think for yourself. You can you can make the connections, right? Yeah. But that does not mean that that all the work that we do, and this is work. It's very fun. I say it's work, you know, because I had to work to get out of bed and be here on time this morning. You know? This is fun. <laughs> yeah. This is, <laughs> um, 
you know, does it mean that when you get the noise on you, it doesn't mean you have to become or you've had a bad experience. Doesn't mean you have to therefore go the opposite and 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 become a life insurance expert. You know, we've talked many times when somebody has engaged with um you know a, an amateur a neophyte they're not all bad and i'm not trying to be disparaging i'm trying to use uh accurate descriptives all right somebody who's like overzealous maybe but they have a life insurance loss about the infinite bank comes but they have no idea about life insurance you know whatever the situation is um when you engage with that, or maybe you make a mistake, maybe you bought a policy and it didn't work out, whether it's your fault, the company's fault, the economy's fault, whatever. Um, and, and I have a lot of clients like, like that, right? My, my, my point here is that you don't have to go full opposite to become a life insurance expert. You don't have to drag a knowledgeable, uh, infinite banking, uh, experienced, practitioner through mm. all of the weeds of what went wrong, why it went or whatever. And so I know, but I want to be encouraging. What's that thing that it used to be red? It had the two knobs, you'd twist the knobs and it would do like the little ink drawing. Etch a sketch. And then you shake that puppy yeah. to get rid of all of it. I wish I that, that we could help that people could do that when they, if they've gone through the ringer with all these negative type experiences and they come to start a, a process to lay an appropriate foundation it's like you just want to shake that out you know just yeah. get rid of this set it aside yeah set, that's put, what just set it aside yeah, maybe don't even shake it just take the little device and put it over there that's right yeah and then think about this other way yeah and then you can compare if you want and yeah. then decide what you want to do you know? I, 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 and I know you do too. I mean, I've had a lot of conversations and, you know, and, and, and I'll, I'll have a 20 minute conversation with anyone. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time with people, right? And, 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 and it's a good thing. I love people. Uh, <clears throat> but when, when I, you can almost tell what they read, watch, and listen to by the language of the conversation or the the words that they use absolutely and and the the misinformed or uh, misunderstandings actual misunderstandings of life insurance but it's a basis of their understanding right uh, the language that they use and the concepts and just the way they explain what they know or what they've heard you can almost tell exactly who or what they've been listening to or reading. And I've gotten to the point where a long time ago, that it's like, you know what? If you want to do that, that's fine. Here, if you put that aside, you can pick it up at any time. But if you put that aside and go to the original works, becoming your own banker, building a warehouse of wealth, five-part book review, Banking with Life DVD, the six-and-a-half-hour video that's available to own or uh, have digital access to, if you'll spend your time there and money, it's about 300 bucks, I think, all of that in totality, and, and you can get the Audible book, too, Becoming Your Own Banker on, on Audible. If you'll spend your time there, that is the shortest path to what you think you want. Because you're only engaging if you like, I want to become my own banker. I love this idea. If that's what you want and you you have the why, you know, you've been abused by the banking system, the financial system, whatever, and that's what you want. That's the shortest path. There are no shortcuts. There are not. This is a direct path to what you want. And, and so I use that and I encourage that a lot. Set it aside. You can pick it up at any time. Go to the original works. Spend time, effort, and money there. I'm telling you that's the direct path to what you want when it comes to the infinite banking concept. And then you can pick all that up if you want to. Yeah. And it's the same with agents. You know, agents call, email. I mean, you've got a book form email this week. The agent's like, oh, I want to do this, this, and this. You know, let me learn everything you know, Ryan. I'm willing to do whatever it takes except spend six years with, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you give it to me now. Yeah. I think a shortcut is just a euphemism for a mistake you haven't realized yet. And yeah, that, I, I think there's a lot of that'll that. That'll be proven by experience. Just take enough of them. 
Yeah. And it, so, okay, what's the response to this? I like to do this, right? Because <laughs> here's the response. Go around other places online, talk to other agents. Not all of them will say things publicly in the way that they would uh, privately. But, oh, Ryan and James say that their way is the only way. Everybody else is wrong. Um, we're majoring in the minors. Ryan, in particular, majoring in the minors, right? All that quibbling about direct and non-direct recognition oh, all that quibbling with like real academic and knowledge and i don't yep. know uh it's too economic all yeah. right spare me my gosh can we please like get back to finance now yeah so those are the <laughs> yeah. let's get out of the economics let's get back to finance <laughs> right. yeah those are the, those are the ordinary little those are the little yeah. chirps right and i've all, gotten worse since i met you too i've heard that oh, oh yes oh, i'm a bad influence Yes. <laughs> yeah, I have a bad influence. Yeah. All of that type criticism response comes from the captured segment of the online media, right? The audience captured segment. But they're not they're not an online marketing organization. They don't really have any agents. They're not agents. But all they do is sell, 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 sell. Sorry. Wow. I, I don't want to throw you off. You're because you're hundred percent right on. Yeah. So, I mean, my point is to acknowledge that others are going to disagree, yeah. right? And fun fact, in contemporary America, professional people struggle with the idea of civil disagreement, right? Everything's either a war or we all have to agree, right? Uh, I'm Irish. I can go either way. You know, a couple decades ago, it was okay to have differing opinions, right? And that's what this is. And yeah, I... Do, I we're not capture. I'm not going to tell people what I think they want to hear just for the sake of it in order to facilitate a sale. It's not, I don't know, I'm asking to take my word for it or what, but like that doesn't, it's no. The answer is no. No. It's not happening. And in fact, when I get the sense that somebody, and this has happened twice this week. It was a full week. I know I've said a lot has happened this week. A lot's happened this week. Uh, of of the validation seeking. <clears throat> yeah. You know, you marinated in the toxic sludge of commodification and audience capture and ingested some form of it and now want it to be validated in a nice made in the USA, you know, all organic, you know, come get me at Whole Foods type label to slap on it. And it's like, No. The answer is no. Uh, and wouldn't people, I don't know, to, to my mind, to be discriminating is a good thing. I, when is it not, right? Like when you go buy a car, do you just say like, well, it's a car. You know, a car is a car. You know, give me the one that gets zero to 60 in the fastest, right? That's the one I want because faster earlier is better, right? Highest cash value relative to... It's a bigger number sooner. Bigger number sooner, better. Bigger number sooner, better. Oof. Bigger number sooner, better <laughs> is the whole mantra. It is. And how convenient. Oh, you know what? You know? Yes. Uh, but along with that, they beat up commissions. You know, you brought it up commissions. And, and there's... Uh, you know, I avoid this stuff. I try to, but clients, colleagues, friends, um, and I'm thankful for all of you, and I'm thankful for all of you listeners, um, the people who watch and listen. Just thank you. Okay. I get a lot of, you know, emails. I'm sure you do too. Uh, clips, and, you know, they get inside some of these, you know, uh, the inner circles and the private groups. You know, they get in there, and they share things with me, Right. And they're like, James, I don't think this is right, or is this right, or, you know, what do you think about this, or whatever. Not that they're seeking my approval, not the, uh, you know, I want you to affirm my position. Yeah, just right. I heard this, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they may or may not give their opinion, and then we, you know, we just share ideas. Okay, the idea of this one, um, they're like, oh, well, you know, I get paid a lower commission on this product, and these other products, they get paid a higher commission, and that's why they that's why they write them. It's all commission. So when they beat us up, they always talk about commissions. But let me, let me, let me, let me share this for you, the listener, without going deep back behind the, you know, curtain of life insurance. The all companies, all companies pay the same commission. All companies, 
I mean, relatively, you know, within five or 10, whatever point, they just don't pay that low level schmuck that <laughs> I'm telling you, because after they pay him, you know, they pay everybody above him and yeah. then, and then they got to have a bunch of production and it's got to be quality business, you know, to get to those higher levels that they all throw out online. You get paid all that. You get, no, no, no. This is, so my point here is all life insurance agents are paid commissions. Even if you go to these financial gurus and say, oh, it's commission-free life insurance, there's some backdoor revenue sharing. Call it what you will. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and, and I'm a capitalist. I believe in commissions. I believe in remuneration. Remuneration. I believe in revenue. I want you to be profitable. I want you to be profitable. And I want your clients to know that you're profitable so you'll be here in the future if and when there's a problem or they need guidance. Okay? And everybody, if you just think through that, you'll agree. Uh, I think you might agree. If you don't agree, then we might not be a good fit because I'm going to get paid whether you become a client or not. Right? Oh. I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, okay. So the idea that we do what we do, Ryan and I, and any and every other uh, legitimate, yeah. faithful, uh, good, wholehearted financial professional, whatever they're wherever they're practicing, they get paid too, mm-hmm. right? And they should get paid. Okay. So the idea that they say that we do what we do only for commission is like that's it's. And it's not out of ignorance, because if they're an agent, of course they know we get paid commissions, right? But then to say that, oh, we, you know, James and Ryan or these other people in infinite banking who don't do the commodified commodification of products, they're only doing it for commission. It's a scare tactic, because we've been indoctrinated as a public to think and to to think that commissions are bad oh but paying the financial advisor one one and a half two percent a year for 60 years Mm. 30 years of Mm. accumulation 30 years of distribution Mm. plus trading cost Mm. is a bad thing you put those two numbers together and i'm sure all these you know financial advisors have already done that it's like here's a commission compared to a lifetime it's Five or ten times. I could make so much more money if I did investments only. Mm. Why? Because I provide a good service and they stay. Mm. Ooh, I'm just saying, the guy who says we only get paid this little amount because he does a little bit of business and brings a little bit of value. The people above him, they all get paid the same. The life insurance company, I don't care if it's distribution Systems, right? So, a life insurance company, they have distribution channels. It could be the bank or financial institution. You know, you call Fidelity and buy an annuity. There's a life insurance company backing up that annuity, and it's not Fidelity. <laughs> you know, Fidelity gets paid, and all their advisors get paid too mm. from the life insurance company. You can call it a fee, you can call it a commission, revenue share. I don't care what language or terminology you want to use. Okay. If the financial advisor down at the bank, Right says, oh, Mr. Jones, you have too much money in your bank, in your account. Look at what you can do over here. Whether it's an investment, they get paid fees, or a life insurance product, or a guarantee product, they get paid commissions. All right. Now, then you have the IMO, independent marketing organization. Then you have the old, you know, captive agent where you can only write their product, or you have the broker. They're all distribution channels for the life insurance company. And if you think they pay one more than the other. You're just misinformed. I mean, it just goes all over me, the guy, the people that say, oh, you do this for a commission. And and we only get that. We're pompers. We only work for free. Well, then by God, donate all your revenue to a worthy cause, right? And then prove it to your listeners. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. People who level the commission hound accusation at us, I think are just ignorant right they just have not well they're, they're taking not advantage just like not paying attention. we've all been conditioned as a general public to think commissions are bad and believe commissions are bad you know um and so it resonates when they say and that's why they do that that's why they say oh i only get paid this and they get paid all that whoever they are mm-hmm. and it's like no no brother if you're going to be honest right let's be fairly honest and everybody above them and they probably get paid more yeah i promise you Anyway. And here, here's the here's here's what's funny about this, right? So we all kind of know that life insurance agents have a negative reputation generally, uh, and then people who detract from us will say that we're majoring in the minors and we think that we're always right, as though we should just gloss over places where we disagree, 
right? Now, how, now how does that make sense, right? If the rest of the industry has it so wrong and we're pointing out places where there's some opportunity for improvement, then what, you, you, you want us to just be quiet about that and just resume the, the, the very things that earned the industry the negative reputation in the first place? It's like, I don't think you can have it both ways. Like, maybe we should acknowledge the reality. Yeah, the reputation of life insurance agents is not good for legitimate reasons. Absolutely. Uh, and, and there are things that are wrong. Like that to me goes together, right? Like if you said, oh, the life insurance industry is great. No, people that usually have positive experiences. You know, everybody wants to become a life insurance agent. There's really low turnover in the business, right? Yeah. <laughs> like if you participated in this fantasy, then you might think, well, then the thing to do is to get online and tell everybody how great everything is. Right? But that's not the situation, right? So, it, so the, you shouldn't, ex people wouldn't, and to my mind, shouldn't expect us to get on or anybody to get on and just say like everything's great it's all roses and fairy dust it's like no it's obviously not and you know it's not and people know it's not but people know it's because not. you or someone you know has gone through a negative horrifying potentially traumatic experience with a person from the financial services community i mean so like there's going to be problems so what we <laughs> should be doing is talking about the problems you know and, and you didn't have a civil discourse a nice, civil, professional disagreement. James, and then, you're hollering, you're spitting. I'm passionate. And then just like you say, <laughs> you know, becoming your own banker is the antidote. It is. That takes you out of all of it, you know? Buddy, you got to read a book. Oh, I got to read a book. You know, early on, yeah, I gotta read you know, like I say early on, I recall seven, eight, ten years ago, uh, People marketing, it's like, you learn the name of the bank concept, become your own banker, and we don't want to even make you read a book. I'm like, oh, okay. Man, you're a winner. You probably can't read anyway. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I know I'm being just They can read the bigger number better sooner, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's like, we won't make you read a book. Uh, like, you're going to make somebody do something? Yeah. You're going to make them? Oh, please, pray tell how. <laughs> Shortcut is just a mistake that hadn't been realized yet. I mean, that's all that is. You that's know, all it we'll is. We'll give you a shortcut. Okay. Well, look, you're going to get experience. Plan a, yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll <laughs> pay one way, right? <laughs> <laughs> we all pay for education. Mm. And some more than others. Well, I think so. There's all of that, which we've spent the majority of this talking about, you know, the state of the industry. And then on the other side of it is just because all of that just sucks the oxygen out of the room. Right? Everyone focus focusing on all that. What's sacrificed? Well, a really thorough analysis of how cash value grows and why. You know, how does it, why does it change the way it does relative to death benefit? You know, the fundamental, conceptual, technical elements of this. And then when you start talking about that, because nobody else is, this appears like fringe or unusual, you know, or maybe over intellectual you know oh and so i get these responses i didn't take finance in high school or college i don't know anything about that i'm not too not really good with money this uh friend of mine i was telling you about earlier 20 million dollars in revenue a year felt feels self-conscious because he doesn't know what the mbas know yeah <clears throat> 20 million dollars a year in revenue yeah I feels self-conscious yeah. fomo is a lie yeah. like what? this that he's like thinking that he's missing out. That's a lie. That he, yeah, <clears throat> that's the lie. But FOMO is real. Him having FOMO is right. real, but yeah. it's based on but a lie. It's a lie. Yeah, right. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I and so it. he got. He went to go do. You know, the Dave Ramsey's got this course type thing. You go do the course. You know, with the other MBAs and you in the group. And so he's. And I just wanted to take him. I'll be like, I mean. Do you need to go back and read over your own your heart goes financial out statement? Him. My heart really goes yeah. out to him. It's like you're killing it, doing it, doing things your way. D why don't feel bad about the way? And the NBA's only talk about it. And the NBA, <laughs> the yeah, academic, they're just going to repeat what they read in the book. Yeah. Uh, so that under that's an example of the feeling of. The self-inflicted feeling of vulnerability and self-consciousness that you don't know enough or you're not good enough or you don't have the authority or the credibility or the expertise and it, and then you throw that up against these charismatic, 
uh, hyperactive, commodified type people who have built the whole click funnel thing that they're going to foist right on top of you. And you're going to go through that. And no wonder people end up feeling bad and having traumatic experiences. And, but, but look, look at the life insurance industry has earned their black eye. The members of the general public, this may be harsh, should take their own responsibility for it too. Sure. Because there's a, there's a degree to which we allow ourselves to be abused by these hyper aggressive financial type people that do the emotional bludgeoning and the marketing. Right. We question our own questioning. Right. So we ask questions. We don't get answers that make sense. And we wonder well, we if don't the problem is over here. questions because I don't feel like they're intelligent questions or I don't want to uh, prove or expose my ignorance. Right. If I ask a question. Yep. Don't want to be made to look dumb. Yeah. Don't want to say the wrong thing. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. All of that, right? And then, okay, so so we uh, talk ourselves down. We talk ourselves in. We don't express those kinds of questions or uncertainties and don't demand or insist on clarity and understanding. Or, and then, therefore, we settle on somebody who's confidently, you know, pouring all of this on me, right. using the key buzzwords that I'm familiar with. I know, you know, understand evident banking, becoming your own banker, banking, yeah. you know, they're and, and they're competent. Yeah. Substituting right. charisma and confidence for competence. And ignorance. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then you end up with something based on all of that, right? based on fluff and smoke. Uh, and lo and behold, it doesn't often work out the way you think it might have. Hey, Ryan, you're just spreading so, fear, uncertainty. Yeah, flood, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And doubt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm reporting experiences I've heard from people, two different people this week. One week. Right? One week. Yeah. First week of the year. Yeah. This constantly happens. Okay, so all of that goes down. So the individual feels traumatized. What comes next? Resentment. What comes after that? That resentment marinates, right? And then IBC comes around, you go back into it, and then you got all this baggage. You got years, maybe, of resentment and baggage. Properly uh, understandable, justified resentment. I get it. And then that, so all that's going to work out well? No. So if, you know, it creates this sort of perpetuating system of resentment, you know, and then uh, hatred and jealousy just persists through the generations, right? Your your kids come to find out about your experience, and it just perforates on down through, you know. Which look, I I get it, and that's unpleasant, but. It's if we go back to the very beginning, the idea that FOMO is a lie that you're maybe you are missing out on some, you know, no one's perfect, can't be everywhere all the time at once. I get it. So, yeah, we're going to miss out on things. There are trade offs. But this idea that you're just too stupid to understand financial things, unless the charismatic, confident, or charismatic, that confident person me. tells you, I just hate that. It's bullying. It is. It's bullying. It is. And, it's abusive. Yeah. And it's every little it's thing full of sometimes. Gaslighting. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I'll ask, you know, who is the agent? I don't really Why? care, by the way. Why? Who is, just so I know. Like, just just so, so you, are you trying to, are you so trying to confirm I tell you your own story? <laughs> so when I tell you the story, I know whose name to drop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's my fault. <laughs> so I get, and it, it, at some point, it's like everything to not like, email call be like what are you doing dude you know you know I, let me let me say that your friend who the 20 million dollar revenue who doesn't have an mba or a higher degree I have a degree at all the academic mm. establishment broadly is gaslighting people to feel that exact way yeah. you need an mba you're going to talk about finance of any sort oh you need an mba or what whatever it is whatever yeah. it is a ba you know you got to have it in business administration blah 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 it's that industry has its oh i'm just saying that's gaslighting the perspective student just become a professor tell me ryan with the uh background in professorship is there any gaslighting on the on that level mm -hmm. of course not no never 
it's like, oh my gosh, I, my heart goes out. Him, yeah, I've experienced the same thing. You know, I don't have a couple of degrees. I don't have this. I don't have that. And at one time, you know, I really, it really, you know, I'm not saying it's all negative. You know, maybe there was some part of that that drove me to learning actually not uh, formally. Yeah. Right. So I'm not saying it was all bad. That was my experience. Yeah. You know. And uh, my lovely wife, Jana, could probably tell you the date and time. I mean, she's got like a photographic memory almost with dates, numbers, and it's weird. Okay. But there's one time in my life, whenever it was, I'm just like, oh, my God. An attorney does not intimidate me. A physician Mm -hmm. does not. A multi-cazillionaire mogul. I'm like, people don't intimidate me. You know, I mean, professional levels, right? And it happened a long time ago, and I'm thankful for it. I still suffer from FOMO, so I'm, you know, I'm still dealing with that somewhat. It's a well-funded illusion of authority, Mm -hmm. you know? How about this? We're going to go to government-funded schools where people They control the curriculum. Other government-funded schools oh are going to teach you, the successful capitalist, about finance. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, and then, and then you know, after the uh, the abuse of, you know, when you're, when you're talking about, you know, generational potentially, um, there's also, and this may have to do with the why, right? If you're an individual, business person, family, whatever – and you've been abused by the financial system, bankruptcy, you know, uh, foreclosures, uh, bad deals gone wrong. Um, you know, so less, yeah, yeah, less than positive experience, you know, yeah. Um, and and you get exposed to the infinite banking concept. My God, it's. Katie, bar the door. Mm-hmm. You will learn because mm-hmm. you th- it resonates. You, you see that the controlling the banking function is the most important thing I can do financially. Yes. Uh, at least secondarily, the most important thing you can do is maybe whatever it is, you're using your God-given abilities and talents to produce an income and um, that experience. And, and let me say, too, that I have a lot of clients that have had less than uh, favorable experiences, whether their own cause or uh, – they had help from agents, life insurance companies, or whatever, financial institutions, you know, that, that they have gotten involved with the infinite banking concept sometime in the past. And then whatever happened, happened that wasn't good. You know, a couple of them go down to zero, lose everything. Some of them go right past zero and owe more than mm-hmm. you lost. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, and in other negative situations like that, then to come around and, and after going through those types of experiences, it's like, oh my gosh, that was the best thing I ever done. Mm. Maybe I didn't know how to keep control of it. Whatever the case is, that was one of the best things I've ever done. And James, here's the background. You know how do I how do I do it? Yeah, yeah. Learning by contrast. When you've got that prior negative experience mm-hmm. and. You get the simplicity of like just an easy policy loan request, you know, or a little two page DocuSign form to get the larger loan or whatever, maybe. It's like, huh? You know, it's like almost deceptively simple. Yeah. <clears throat> James, don't you want to borrow any money? Don't you need any money? Mr. Businessman, we have a perfect line of credit. It fits all your needs. Every bit, you know, you can go do the things you want to do. I mean, the the banker, God bless him, they're almost a glorified salesperson yeah. selling loans. This is the inverted world, right? The mm-hmm. complicated horror show that is conventional finance is made to look easy and attractive and alluring, right? Yes. But then over in life insurance, Seductive. yeah, you know, you got to go through all these calls with me in an advisory phase and do strategy, read a book, uh oh, read a book. You know, there, this illusion of all this work, really, that's not. Right, but illusion of all this work when the reality is there's just an elegant simplicity. So it's the inverse, it right? Is. Over here in IBC, looks hard, looks weird. A lot of scammy life insurance agent people on the internet telling me to buy life insurance when in fact it's elegant, simple, private, tax preferred, better for you, all that. And then over there in conventional finance, the illusion, I was just, just sign here, it'd be so easy. When in fact, let's convert that open line of credit to a no, or that indebtedness on that line of credit to a no. What? Why, why does that ever happen? What? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to control the, wait, 
you got a hunt you have a one hundred thousand dollar line of credit, but your balance is fifty, and now in the next there oh that's your new <laughs> limit fifty, yeah. and you can either pay that off in the next sixty days, or then we'll convert it to a time payment. Mm. How convenient! What's but, collateralizing that? But look, the last uh, economic recession went fifteen years ago, so nothing bad's going to happen, right? We haven't had a bad uh, things have gone well the last fifteen years, relatively, yeah. So what's wrong with that? You know, I just, the bank's never going to call notes due. That's never. fear, uncertainty, and doubt right there. Oh, yeah. It's like, and then it's the same as, uh, you know, the, the uh, non-recourse loan. When I say everything that you own is collateralizing, backing up your John Henry, which is a personal guarantee to the lender. And then, oh, wait a minute. I know they over collateralize. I know they do. Of course they have to. Character, collateralization, credit, uh, you know, all the C's of banking. If you want a a $20 million loan, right? 10 million, 2 million, 2,000. I'm not, I'm just saying, uh, I'm using that number because actually, you know, actual case but it doesn't matter what the number is i'm not trying to throw out big numbers if you want a thousand dollar loan from the bank tell me how much the value what is the value of the collateral they're going to require at least 1500 <laughs> it's going to be damn sure more than a thousand <laughs> i love you know yeah i, I got a 20 million dollar operating loan and i got 35 million dollars of assets collateralizing oh wait and then who valued the assets right uh huh. Mm-hmm. And did they give them full market value? And then how much did the bank, the lender, discount that for a future value? Because you know they didn't say, "Oh, you have twenty five million dollars in assets now, collateralizing that twenty million dollar loan. We'll we'll afford you a three to five percent modest growth rate in value." Bullshit. You know it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> People don't think about these problems, but it's just fear, uncertainty, yeah, fear, and doubt. Yeah. Yeah, because look, there's never a problem. There's never a problem until there's a problem. Then when there is a problem, uh, that's when assets start swapping hands. It must be nice to live in the blissful land of American finance where nothing goes wrong. That pen's going to get your jacket. Oh, where, thank you. where nothing goes wrong, you know, and there and things are certain, you know, and, and the industry is just honest and wants to help. Yeah. And they're going to they're gonna give you what's best for you, and they want what's best for you, and, and things are all going to work out well. People in America, older people in America, they don't have a, a retirement problem. Oh, people, no. People don't run out of money in retirement. No. What are we talking about? The older people have it, you know, as, as great as, as one could possibly hit. There aren't, you know, uh, people having to sell family now, it, assets. It's just to, this all of a sudden, after 15 years of artificially suppressed interest rates, that we're in a rising interest rate environment, a rising interest rate environment now, and that's causing that now. Now they only have problems now because the interest rates are rising, right? The retiree. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. And, and then and, and I work that in there to say this. And I've said it before. We've said it before. In the home office of a life insurance company, all right, at your local banks, every bank that you drive by, every branch, national, local bank, whatever, the majority of those employees in the bank, right, right up into the president on a lot of them and the vice president, have never experienced a rising interest rate environment. Mm. Think about that. Well, James, no one's saying that. And that doesn't matter anyway. So what? We we're going through. Yeah, it does dadgum matter. It's like, go back 15 years ago. We're talking about 2008 and 2009. Yeah, how many financial advisors had lived through a market correction like that? Not very many, but a dang lot more than who lived through the 2001, 2000 correction. Yeah, yeah. How many of those advisors in 2000, 2001, and I'm an optimist, right, lived through a market correction? Dang near none. It was, a, it was like less than 10%. Oh, and not my statistics. These are, this is data that's been out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's. I'm actually sitting here thinking about this, a little surprised that we haven't come at it from this angle before about this fear, uncertainty, and doubt. All we're doing is spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt and stuff. It's like, is everything okay? Like, you mean there's nothing wrong? There's nothing wrong with American finance? There's nothing wrong with the life insurance industry? There's nothing wrong with how life insurance is bought and sold? Nothing wrong with jank 
jankly structured policies. Well, look, it's just <clears throat> it's only going to mech in your at my age eighty five. Eighty three, yeah. Well, that was a one case eighty three. Uh-huh. It's only going to mech at age six. Well, I'll just the okay. We got a a, a future mech. If the uh, illustration is adhered to, there's a mech in the future. What's 60 years in the future? Well, the agent, he'll just manipulate the illustration to lower the premiums there. So that mech, that hamper stam or whatever, you know, identifier that the life insurance company uses to identify the year of a mech goes away. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The whole purpose of annually renewing term. (laughs) To make the little mech trigger go away. (laughs) (laughs) But it's so far out in the future, you know, I'm probably not even going to live that long. And yeah, it's it's no problem. I'll just whatever, do whatever. Yeah. Have an outstanding loan. The policy becomes a mech and no problem, no problem. He's mentioning this story. I have an individual spoke to... uh, the guy was talking to the agent. One of the companies, one of the big four potential client was talking to the this the agent. The big four. They have the fattest vice presidents. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, so he's the the client's asking the agent questions. The agent didn't have the answers, and so the client goes to the home office. Oh, they have all the answers, <laughs> right? No, I'm kidding. Because it's going to get better there, and the client essentially instructs the home office staff members on how to on how, what he wants in this illustration and for this policy and the result is a policy where there's a, a mech trigger when he turns 83 years old and then this poor guy you know because kind of the same thing had a negative experience traumatized you know feels like he needs to take responsibility himself and go and do it himself which I also understand, right? Sure. Everyone giving you a bad time, giving you the runaround. I'm just going to do it myself. I totally get that. Okay. So you do that. Uh, and then you end up with something that's going to mech at age 83. And I tell you, he had all these reasons why that was okay. And maybe it ultimately would be okay, you know. But my point to him was I mean, you wouldn't wake up and go pursue that. You wouldn't tell somebody, look, hey, I really want my IBC style whole life policy to Mac when I'm 80. It's so far out there. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't care. It's way out there. It doesn't yeah. matter. Oh, well, okay. And you could do that, but it's like, how about don't do it? Which is not true. It does matter. It does matter. I'm being, you want to have an old, your oldest policy, right? And as life and as whole life policies get older, cash value grows more efficiently. Most efficient. You have all this cash value growth and dividends. I'm sure will be substantial. I mean, Big four company, they pay nice, they pay legitimate dividends. I don't have any outstanding loans, or so there's never any issues. It's just a Mac at age 83, Ryan. I mean, my gosh. Right. Oh, direct recognition, too. What does that matter? So run some loans. Yeah. And see how that. Oh, between now and there, the illustration drawing immediately. Yeah. And see where that Mac trigger moves. Yeah. Oh. What? What do you mean? Hmm. The number's bigger. This number's bigger. Bigger number, number, better sooner. Don't worry about the long term. No, don't worry That's about That's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Nelson, you know, graduated 88. You know, I went and visited, my sister and I went and visited our oldest living uncle, my grand, great uncle, my grandfather's brother. Mm. The guy's 95. Oh, wow. Yeah, drinks a beer every now and then. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I'm just saying. 83? Especially nowadays. I mean, you don't know how long how long you're gonna live for. You don't know what kind of money. And it there was just I no, have the, hope. The, the point is there was just no reason for it, right? There was no there's no reason to do that. Um, but there was no reason that the agent couldn't have answered the guy's questions either, right? So it's not like there's blame. He didn't want to say anything. He wanted to get paid. He didn't want to blow up the deal. Didn't want to blow up the deal. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm interjecting. It's. Know, it's well. audience. Ca- it, it. It's the financial equivalent of this journalistic idea of audience capture. Yeah. Of look, everybody else out there just wants bigger number, better sooner. So here's that. Say yes. Yeah. Oh, you have questions. Well, mm. and know. you know what? From what I know, I'm busy. What I understand, I love the principles of the infinite banking concept and becoming your own banker. I love the concept, love the idea, love the principles. So I and I'm busy. I gotta go. Yeah. Can you get that done in three weeks? Okay, I gotta go. So I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now <clears throat> I love it. It's like however old you're. I don't know if you're 20. I, I, it doesn't matter. Just put age on it. It has different affects. 
mm. based on your age. Mm. So I got into the future 10 years is, you know, from 20 to, you know, 30, 10 years, okay. 40 to 50, 50 to 60. What if you're 60 and then 10 years now you're 70? Then there's a problem. It's probably too late to correct it. Had, there's a rough, a current client has parents, late 60s, early 70s. They have insurance in force, but it's all some version of universal life. Oh, yeah. Guess what's happening to it? I know exactly what's happening. One of them's gone. Yeah. It was there in October of yeah. 23. Here we are in 2024. December, it's gone now. Well, they didn't pay enough premium. Yep. Cash value, cash account value account had value. already went to zero. Oh, right? yeah. Premium and, goes up. And they weren't forthcoming with more premium. Yeah. Policy's gone. Yeah. I have... I. Too late what? now, right? Absolutely. Prior uh, heart-related condition, what? medications, late what? 60s. What? But it was so easy to go through underwriting. Probably got a table shave. It was so, at the individual, he's in his late 60s, so and who knows when he bought I don't know. When did he buy it? Long time uh, ago. Long time ago. There, maybe 20, 30 years. Yeah, there's table shaving going on. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe and maybe he was perfectly healthy, right? But maybe he wasn't, and they table shaved. They gave him a better rating than what he actually qualified for. Very heavy in the universal life industry. Very heavy. Well, wonder why. Because look look why. They know it's not going to pay. They paid all of that premium, and it's gone. Now, they did have the right. They should have had the contractual right to pay a higher premium, and then they didn't. And then they so did, then right. it lapsed. But of course and they did. The account value was already zero because it was already cannibalized for the several preceding years because of the increasing cost of the insurance. Yeah. So there's no account value. Left. And go ahead and live long enough and let that cost basis exceed the freaking death benefit. Yeah. Oh, wait. But wait, wait, wait. Uh, I'm on a fixed income now. I'm retired. I didn't save enough, whatever. And now these interest rates are, now they're just now starting to hurt me. So- there, there's compounding problems on that individual. And don't think there won't be compounding problems or challenges in the future for each of us. Right. Oh, but you didn't need that death benefit. Right. The life insurance company was going to keep the account value anyway when you died. And it wow. sure as heck couldn't have supported a supplemental income and provided mm. a death benefit. Mm. Most of them can't do either. And I'm talking about <laughs> universal life. <laughs> Much less both or some value of both. Oh, I know the experts out there, then the non-experts out there, these younger people, these people that are promoting UL to the nth degree. You're being gaslit. Mm -hmm. You're being gaslit by the financial industry and the life insurance company, and then the financial guru who actually does know and actually does have experience. If they've been in the life insurance business for 30 years, they have experience. They are gaslighting you. Mm. <laughs> anyway. And I'm only raising my voice for effect, okay? Well, and it's so curious how, you know, even the providers of dividend-paying whole life who do the table shaving and the anti-selection type things, curious how they also require the use of annually renewing term what? if you want to pay a PUA premium. What? Now, why would, now, why would that be? The whole idea of life insurance is to offset the risk, right? Life insurance. I'm going to offset the risk of dying too soon. Everybody knows there's a 100% chance of dying, graduating. I'm going to offset that risk. And then the life insurance company is going to do everything in their possi they possibly can and in their power to mitigate the risk that I just paid for them to assume. Of course. Oh, what does all that mean, James? Annual renewing term. The longer I live, the probability of them actually paying a claim goes down. Wait, the cash value of whole life, dividend paying whole life, straight whole life, all whole life, the cash value must equal the death benefit at age 121 today, 100 previously. So that cash value is going up, and I'm paying them. The cash value is a derivative of the premium. Am I offsetting the risk? Are they offsetting the risk? Or mitigating the risk that I paid them to. Are they who's offsetting what risk in that whole timeline? Yeah. Well, you throw annually renewing term in, oh. and just as you say, I mean, I don't like. I don't want to skip up, but this is one of the points, by the way, where we're majoring. I'm majoring in the minors, right? Oh yeah, quibbling, right? Quibbling. We just do it. It's just different ways to do the same thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because if you recalculate the cost of death benefit every year, then you've Reinjected an exponentially rising growth curve 
into your capital base. Because the money, I and the way it will manifest is you'll just stop. You won't do what you thought you could have done in the contract. You'll stop paying sooner. You'll pay less than you otherwise could for less time than you otherwise could have. All the while you're getting older. And by the way, income tends to go up statistically over time. So as your need to pay premium increases, <coughs> your actual payment will decrease earlier than otherwise would have. What? And I can't think that far. Man, I'm just, I can't think that far. So then you get to go back through underwriting. Fun. At a later age. Fun. Where you may or may not get the policy. Fun. To pay the same premium you were already paying, and if the contract had been done right in the first place, would have been able to continue paying. You're just getting lost First, in the weeds, Ryan. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the minors. Huh? <clears throat> yeah, you're majoring in the minors. Yeah. yeah. Fear and, and Nelson yeah. was agnostic. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it was product uh, and agnostic. Yeah, yeah, talk like you know you knew him with authority, please, and you know continue to show uh, on him. Now, yeah, Nelson was agnostic. I, and I, uh, you know, I've heard that too from certain members of the IBC related community uh, that you know banking is a process; it's not a product. No question. And I agree. Yep. Um, but we do have a product that we are using. They completely skip over. It's 92 pages. It's an easy read. And you as a financial expert, I'm sure you can read, right? Okay. Don't skip over the admonitions throughout this book for you as the agent to understand and know life insurance. Uh, don't, don't skip over that, okay? Sorry. Yeah. So it is a product that you're using to become your own banker. No question banking is a process. None. And that can be calibrated. I mean, when you go to buy a car... Look, when people do IBC, we're talking about a substantial percentage of available cash flow every year for a long time. It's a big deal. Now, you can go buy a car, okay, substantial cash flow, but only for right now, right? This isn't something that you're going to do for that one car for 30 years, right? But the amount of time, effort, and attention people put in to the nuance of car purchasing, I mean, if oh my gosh, if we took that much careful care and attention in life insurance, well, it was, everybody's majoring in the minors, right? You should just walk into the dealership <laughs> with a blindfold on, let them hand you the keys and walk away, right? Like that's the, that would be the fear less, uncertainty, you know, everything's clear there. Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> Look, we, we uh, a couple of years ago when Ryan was automobile shopping, oh my gosh, hmm. the amount of time and research that this young man puts into anything that he does, okay, much less car shopping is like. I'm trying to replace flooring right now. Where are you out? <laughs> OMG. <laughs> You know what? It, Every it, surface I feel now, I'm like, what material is this? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I now know very well the difference between ceramic and porcelain tile feel. I can tell. They're close, but. And then, uh, of course, you, to you know the, the, the uh, difference in feeling uh, laminate flooring, plastic wood flooring, uh. faux wood flooring, engineered wood flooring, and then real wood flooring. Yeah. And wood tile. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Huh. Oh my god! I know. Whenever my lovely wife wants another automobile, um, I promise you. I mean, she does. She does the research to the nth degree. <clears throat> but what I discovered, we she she bought a, a lovely automobile. Her granddaddy used to drive the model, and so she had some kind of emotional kind of uh, attachment, or uh, what do you call that? Sentimental. Yeah, sentimental. And so we went and got one. Uh, their service department is in is an absolute dumpster fire <laughs> absolute dumpster fire fire and then the uh you know the salesperson misrepresented god bless her so she delivered the car on a sunday right so she could get paid because she was already gave her notice and was leaving oh. so hindsight's 2020 she's a lovely girl um anyway the service so, uh, 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 <laughs> so as my lovely wife whenever she wants another automobile she does her research the purchasing conversation is going to occur in the service department. Mm. Oh. Yes. For me. I yeah. mean, just for me. You know, anybody can pay a premium. Any jack-legged licensed individual will take your premium and help you pay a premium, whether it's PNC, life insurance, or whatever. It's like, And I don't think things should go wrong. And I, we don't even, we don't allow our clients to become dependent. They don't want to become dependent upon us. So they want to rely on us to provide service and education and consultation. No question. Um, 
Yeah. Independent, mutually beneficial exchange. No dependence. You know, and that's exactly the availability. A mutual. You know, I learn from clients. And and so it's it's not like I know everything. It, uh Regardless of what these haters say, you know, it's like, oh, James acts like he knows everything. Well, it's called confidence, brother. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know everything. I sure don't. Anyway, um, mutual. Just mm. look up that word, apply it to the life insurance, apply it to everything in your I remember the first time I ever heard the word mutual. Mm. I'm like 12 years old, and my girlfriend said at the time the Feeling wasn't mutual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a country boy, and I'm like, oh, what the hell did that mean? I had to go to Webster's, and I'm like, the biash, the biash, I love you. Anyway, there's power in the idea of mutual, mutuality, mutuality yeah. mutual benefits. Anyway, so. Yeah, I agree. The feeling is mutual, you might say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The benefit is mutual, right? Hey, I'm happy. Don't be captured. I think the audience. I mean, there's going to be more coming from me on the audience capture thing because the yep, you know, little, 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 just say yes type. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That but I don't think people want that. Um, and I get it. You can get lost in the weeds, and you don't want to just get. You know, you don't want to lose sight of the forest for the trees. But it's also okay to know why you're doing what you're doing and what the approach is, and to have to have your to have questions be welcome and answers forthcoming, answers that make sense, you know, that's all okay. The uh, the pressure thing from the agents, you know, if you're going through that or if you've gone through that, I'm sorry. Um, I empathize. It is unpleasant. I know it's unpleasant. But not everybody's like that. No. Uh, and you really can set it aside. And I'm also, by the way, not saying that I or we are the only people who know how to have a professional conversation. There are others, uh, people I like. I mentioned Doug earlier, Doug Jones. I like Doug a lot. <clears throat> I love Doug. Barry Dyke, another one. I love Barry. Uh, so it's not like Barry, there are uh, anointed few. There are people who are who do this properly. You don't hear from them super often because they're busy, <laughs> you know. I was say they're they're doing good work, and yeah. you know, I love them. Anyway, so I'm happy. Bigger number, better sooner. Yeah, but look, man, you like you threw out. This is what I wrote down. You threw out the the toxic sludge of commodification, <laughs> and there's some heaters in there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't finish writing that one word. You're probably saying something. I was in, enamored and had to listen. <laughs> uh, anyway. <clears throat> All right. I'm happy. Let's go have some barbecue, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for listening. I had fun. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you for joining us on the Banking with Life podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe and click on that little notification bell. Otherwise, join us on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher for weekly content.